uh, we are here. Hey, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't sure whether that was on yet or not. Oh, no, I was actually off of the La La Land already. Well, we're having some festivals. It's one of those days. <laughs> it's been a great day. What's everybody up to? How's your day been? We are tuning in day 23, like... Getting close to over this little bit, isn't it? I know. We actually started writing down some other topics, so a couple of you have sent a few things in. We'd love to hear other topics you want us to talk about. Yeah, yeah. It's always been a little bit of fun. We've been having some really, really interesting conscious conversations with a number of people lately, and there's been so many different things going on in the world. A lot of bit of a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. I think that's, that's a great word. word. A, yeah. little, a little bit. bit. Yeah, yeah. A little bit of fear and a little bit of um, misinformation and people being unsure on what's going on and it's been very interesting to see both sides of perspectives. It has been, it has been. So tonight's topic was who do you go to for advice and are they biased? And initially both of us were like, eh? What? But then we kind of sat there and went, oh well, because like we was, well, you were like, oh I don't really go to advice and why would people go for, for advice? And ultimately, we well, it was not why. It was my asking you the question at the time. What? Why do you? Why do we? Mm. Not why do just in general, but why do hey, we go and ask people for advice? Yeah. And I think when you answer that question a little bit for yourself, you may understand a little bit more of the answer too. Mm. Why do you go and ask other people for advice? Like, have a think about it as we're chatting this through. Because it's a, essentially a really simple answer. We go and ask people for advice if we're unsure of what to do or what, what we should be doing or thinking or what not. But ultimately... What's, what's the best way to find the right answers? Be present with yourself. Be present and quiet in your mind. Yeah. So, so it was only today I said to Shana, we were talking and I said, um, the best things I've ever done in my life, best and the best and the best and the best, Never have I ever asked advice for them. You just know. Well, for me, for I just know. For me, and it's the this best is, things. This is a, he's an ectomorph brain. So this man just, he's like, his brain goes, thing, happen, done. Hello, Jane. So, yeah. I think in the, in the, the point there as well. Different is brains, and we're going to get into that. Different, different brains, yeah, for sure. However, usually you can't, you know when you get those amazing answers, you know, something comes to you, that makes sense. You're in the shower, you're going for a walk, you're in nature, you're doing something and your mind's really, really calm just before you go to bed at night. You know how you wake up in the middle of the night or you go to bed and you're like, I'll remember that in the morning and you forget. Because just as you've calmed down, just before you're about to go to sleep, you're becoming present. And you know when you're not going to sleep and your mind's wandering. Mm. So that's the point. But when just as you get there, you go, that makes sense. Now for me, in my experience, Whenever I've done something that has been absolutely amazing or complete no regret or been absolutely just known it was the right thing, never have I needed the advice for that. Mm. And I've never had to ask anyone for those parts of advice. Yes, I do ask for advice from friends and those things at times, not very often anymore, um, because I can give myself that opportunity to be more present and go, this is the right thing to do for me mm -hmm. at this time. Yeah. Everyone's different, but, but the reason I ask that question is it's quite simple, is if you can come down, balance, find your presence, you generally have all the answers anyway. But to get the right answers, we we've probably should stop looking externally. The answers are always on the inside. Mm. And so I'll, I'll give you guys my answer like on, on my personal experience first, and then I actually want to give you guys a bit of... Um, a bit of perspective about what I do with genetics and understanding different humans by their bio biology. Um, so for me, when you said that, I was like, yeah, it would obviously be, you might like it. It would obviously be. <laughs> oh, I don't worry about it. That's you won't like it, it's not sweet enough. Um, so with my personal experience, it's like, I was like, yeah, it's like when I'm calm and all late, I actually haven't needed to ask for advice much because I'm finally in this space of like, connection with myself and silence and presence and presence with me, presence with relationships, presence with everything. It's but in the, the connectedness past, too. It's like mm, real I feel connected. so connected to source, to myself, to my being, to my love, 
to everything. Aww. So I feel like I'm, I'm not needing to ask for advice anymore because I'm not doing five million things and trying to people please. For the first time in my life, I'm in, in this space where I'm like, no, I know what I want and I need. And I might occasionally throw concepts and ideas and thoughts around that I might want to just throw thoughts, of, you know, throw things against the board and see what sticks and, and have the conversations around that. But actual advice, not so much. But in the old days, I know Claire, you're watching this, one of my girlfriends, Claire used to be one of my girlfriends I'd ask advice of because I was in such a state and I remember going and even getting tarot card readings to help me figure myself out because I was such a cluster. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not to swear. I was, That's not what the, yeah, okay. I was so frantic in my life in this whole space of people pleasing and of, um, of overachieving, of trying to sacrifice myself for everything else. And I was constantly in this space of attempting to over exude and I wasn't present, I wasn't in my own power. All I was doing was doing five million things and wondering why I was spread so thin. And you know what my, my, my usual way of trying to fix that was? Just add something else. Go and find something else. The next shiny thing. The next, next best, greatest freaking thing to pop across my desk. It was this constant thing, and I know so many of you out there would feel trapped in this in the world as well, of this constant achieving, people-pleasing, I'll be good enough when... But the truth is, it took me to actually stop and drop and throw everything away and really sit with myself and figure out, well, who am I, what am I being, what's true for me, what can I let go of? And even though my monkey brain was like, it's not safe to let go of the things. When I dropped in everything, I finally had the clarity, and now I can sit there and rebuild. And now I am rebuilding um, from a space of empowerment. Metaphor. Give you an absolute perfect metaphor. Go to the edge of like a river, put your hand in it, and mess it all right up. Mess up all the mud. You've just put a whole heap of information, you've blurred it all up. Mm -hmm. Leave it sit, leave it get still, let it get calm. And it will become clear. Yeah. Yeah. So as you do this, throw a rock into a puddle and there'll be ripples. And that's like all of the noise. But if you let it sit and let it become calm, it will become clear again. Mm. Be smooth again. And when you're in that deep point of connectedness, and that's just a great little example of when you let things stop, when you take away all the noise, if you take away the things that make all the noise, and our mind is very good at making us want to it wants to be active your brain has been trained to consistently be active mm. but we actually achieve a whole lot more with less effort mm. we've been taught our whole lives that no pain no gain and you try hard and you can get results i disagree i feel like there's a point to it because it's the, not the more effort it's the quality of the effort mm. that you put in but if you do less you're going to get a whole lot better job if you attempt things from a place of ease things become easier and it's the same as your decision making. If you're trying to make 75 decisions at once and you're thinking about your life and your finances and your job and your shitty love life and whatever else you've got going on, what we've all had these things happen, your answers are going to be blurry. Mm. You, you, of course you're going to go to your mates and then half the time when you go to advice, do you feel any more clear anyway? No, no I never did. I never did because I'd always try and find advice from multiple people. And the funny thing is, is a lot of us seek advice for validation. Mm -hmm. We would, Kimmy, you know, I know Kimmy's watching. The number of times I've run Kimmy, and Kimmy's great, she just seems to know when I need validation, and she also knows when I need a swift kick. And there's been a couple big decisions in my life that I've run Kimmy about, just to have that like, ugh, and she's gone, you're questioning it. So there's your answer. Yes. Right, and, and this is the other thing that we forget. If you're not certain, there is your answer because mm -hmm. if it's really if you're really in it if you're really 100 percent committed if you know in your soul it's correct you won't be questioning it because if you're questioning it you either have a question about your own heart mind and integrity mm -hmm. or their heart mind and integrity and that in itself is a flag and it's a on that note as well um ken always used to say to me we get talking about different things and you're, oh, i'm not sure or you're feeling about this and you're feeling that or i think this is going he goes do you feel it? And I'm like, yeah, I feel like that. And he goes, well, if you feel it, that's how it is. Mm. If you feel that someone's pulling away from you, that's because they are. 
if you feel that you're going to lose your job, you are going to lose it. If you feel like these points, unless it's a projection, but if you deeply feel some of this, a lot of these things are what is going on. Yeah. A lot of these things are what is actually happening. I shouldn't say all the time. Sometimes you're just Yeah, because sometimes, sometimes, and again, it comes back to that mirror thing of like, well, if you're blaming or pointing at that That's person, then maybe um, it's actually your own mirror reflection. So often people are, shit, often people are like, oh, he's pulling away from me. Are they or are you? Right? Because often we will deflect yes. and reflect these things yes. upon yes. our partners yes. or other persons um, because we're not willing to own it ourselves. So there's always check that part first. Yes. Definitely. And Danny said it depends what you're asking advice about. Of course. Like there's stuff that I call my big sister about and I'm like, yo. It actually does sound like that. Yo. And, um, and I'll ask your advice on children things or about other relationship things and things like that. So yeah, I mean, it does definitely depend on the context. But you know generally you can come back into your heart. And before you've even asked the person, all you're asking for is validation for what you already know. Mm -hmm. And what I know I used to do was I'd go, I'm feeling this more so. Like I'm like a 60-40. I'm going to ring my five favorite people and see if I can get a tally of who agrees with what and then what their thoughts and reasonings are. And then I'll summarize that information and then make my decision from there. Because I'm like almost 50-50 but not quite. Um, I think it's an interesting point too when we start asking for advice. Quite often, people ask advice from someone, as you say, that is going to side with them and agree with them. And that's what Valerie just said. She was good. just saying, usually play the devil's advocate, and people get another at me, angry at me because I don't agree or validate them. Yeah, and you might be that person that sits there and goes, no, nah, cut the shit, I'm actually going to give you exactly what I think and feel about this. We actually need people in your you life that. that contradict. And this is, we talked about this last night, there's this huge point of having people in your life that don't agree with you. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've been saying this for a long time. So Don't agree with you without exhausting you. Yes, yes. There's a, And there's a point there that you need to have people that are nurturing you, but also challenge you and say... Is this the right place for growth? Are you staying in the same? You, you're doing this because are you scared of growth? Are you scared of taking the challenge? You're uncomfortable. That can be a good thing. I've said this with um, my parents have been very, very religious and that. And I've always been for quite a long time said things like, what does Buddha say? What does uh, this say? What does science say? And, and um, I've got people that have been involved in these things. Because unless you're taking a different perspective, you're taking a complete opinion over him or somebody else's information. Now it needs to be, you can't just say this is true without all of the information. We can take information from over here and over here and bring it all in together. Now with advice, if you've got, an, if you're gonna ask for some advice, get it from both ends of the spectrum mm. so that you've got all of the information. Mm. Because otherwise, if you're taking information that's, it is becoming biased, it's all from over here, you're going to get it from people that are in exactly the same place and is that going to help your growth? Oh yeah, yeah, that was my other thing. Was be careful of asking advice from people that will want you to stay at their level and not excel. So depending, you're right, depending on what it is as to who you're going to talk to, I believe. Like, um, you'd want to, if it's a business decision, you want to talk to someone that's failed and failed hard. So also, you know what not to do. And then you want to talk to someone who's highly successful. Yes. And find out how they're different. And then sit there in the middle and see what's congruent for you and your mission and what's not congruent. And that's an interesting point because quite often I don't take advice. It's not that I don't learn from people, but I don't take advice from somebody who's in a worse financial position than I am Mm. when it comes to business. I will listen and I will watch from from the people that are. That being said, I've been in some shitty financial positions. So I will take advice from somebody that is doing much better than me. I will understand and I'll listen to the people more frequently that are in a better position than me. The people that are on my same level, obviously everyone has a great information and great perspective to offer. However, if you want to listen to someone and, and uh, if that's the direction you're going, mm. I would recommend, well, I personally would listen deeper to the people that are doing better. Definitely. And I think when it, <clears throat> when it comes to personal relating, I know I have been that friend that can often look like I'm arguing, sorry, look like I'm <laughs> arguing for the other side, but because of the work I do with epigenetics, it's kind of sometimes sitting there and I'll see, like we've had these discussions, you're like, well, that person's behaving like this and that's a, that's a poor behavior. 
But genetically, some people are actually wired to behave, to respond, to react, to think, and to be in different ways. And I, I would love the world to start moving in this general direction of seeing that we are all genetically different. We're all wired differently. So what we may perceive as right and wrong and as acceptable and non-acceptable is actually just the broad, broad spectrum of biological reactivities, behaviors, and mannerisms. Like, as I was saying before, I was gonna give our stories and go a little bit genetic, is that some bodies, more mesomorphic bodies, um, will say what they're thinking in the moment and not necessarily put it through the same filtration systems as a more of an endomorphic. So I'm endomorphic, Clint's more ectomorphic, and we've got a lot of friends and family who are mesomorphic, so they're like the short, fiery, aggressive, more variety, more change, more reactive in some instances, in some, very different, I'll get into that in another conversation. But what we've noticed is that, what we now know is that some people will say in the moment, and then not really have a filter for for mass process, but you know you're going to get what that person's thinking, right? Then yeah. Then ectomorphic people are more like point A point point B. Why the hell would you go anywhere other than straight from point A to point B? And they're also going to take the opportunity to find the facts first, so they know the facts, so that when they give you their answer, they're giving it from a professional and an informed position. Then you get us in the morse over here, and we go, information, 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 thought, emotion, emotion, information, emotion, information, emotion, information, information. Now I don't know where to go, what to do. Holy crap, I need to talk to other people because this is a windstorm. Hmm. And then we might end up in an emotional heap. And I know many of you probably can relate to that. Or you'll either, you'll either get to an emotional heap and you'll make an emotional reactive move, or you won't make a move at all. And then you'll go and distract yourself by doing something else. And the other point about that as well is doing that when you, if you're not centered and still and connected, no matter how much advice you are, half of this journey, you're not going to be impressed with it. Even if you're working and you and it's going to the right place, you're still going to be questioning whether you should be doing it if you didn't connect in the first place. Mm. So if you come to a place of stillness, on that journey, the way you feel, we've seen this yesterday, mm. the way you feel getting to where you're going is going to affect how you feel when you get there. Yes. So if your mind is in this absolute tirade of nonsense, even if you talk to 20 people, professional, unprofessional, they all give you the same answer and say, when you're going down the road, make a left, you've asked all the same people, on the way there, you're still going to be going, fuck am I going the wrong way? Mm. So the point with that is, again, slowing down, Everyone is going to validate and process this. <laughs> <laughs> My manic these days is nowhere near what it used to be. But I literally used to go into absolute manic states, and some of you only know me about that. Um, I remember being there and I was like, I just want to go on a silent retreat because all I want to do is I just want to finally be able to hear my own internal voice, my own dialogue, my own ability to make my own choices because I felt like which all it really was was actually just me not being able to be present and again having too much on my plate and again being so out of flow and out of balance um, and I think the greatest thing like since we've really met is really coming into that space of enoughness love compassion but also the ability to slow down and drop everything and just be one with myself but the other thing that you don't even realize you do is enable me to be my biology because our life now is exactly what my bio biology needs yet many would see it as lucky many would see it as lazy in some ways because we, I am lazy. <laughs> <laughs> because we don't like we don't get up early unless it's an absolute bloody requirement we 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 do a lot more mindfulness we do a lot of yoga, we do a lot of present uh, breath work and whatnot, and we do have uh, more afternoon activity, minimal morning activity, which is so great for my body. Um, so for the first time in my life, I'm actually more in alignment with my biology than I've ever been before. Total gift here. But, <laughs> but it's, it's enabled me to finally actually know what I want. And, and you said that before, have people around you that are gonna question you and challenge you and Clint does that. I'll go, oh, I'm thinking about doing this. And they'll go, are you thinking about doing that for you? Or are you thinking about doing that for something else? And do you really want to do that? And I'll this go... This is going to sound really, oh. really awful with, with the way I, I sometimes give support. Awesome. Yeah, I am. I am. I'm, I'm the biggest. 
Um, I'll show you too. Um, <laughs> you why did I do that? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I had a point, and that was that I like Shana questions when she says, oh, I'm thinking about doing this and this and this, and I'm going, all right, is this something you want to do? And she goes, oh, yeah, and I say, the only reason I'm asking is if you want to do it, you have all of my support. And when I say, is it what you want to do? Are you doing this for somebody else? Are you doing this for the money? Because if it's just for the money, I have no interest in supporting you on that. Mm. I know that sounds awful because there is a balance here, mm. but the balance should be, this is what I want and this is going to serve us, me, the most. It's a greater capacity for happiness because so many of us, and this is like the natural process of supporting and rewiring um, old what? beliefs and habits, it's not passing, um, is that so many of us were wired for this keep striving, keep achieving. And I actually had two clients here today and we were talking about that. Is so many of us are wired that when I get to here, then I'll be happy. Bullshit. You'll keep striving for some untangible, unrealistic, non-stop goal that doesn't bring you happiness. Yeah. And you'll constantly sit here going, when I get there, I'll be happy. Well, you won't. This you is... won't. Because if you can't love this, you can't love the reflection in the mirror right freaking now, you're not going to be happy with that reflection because that is not happiness. The happiness is here now. This and if you can be point. happy... Happiness isn't a destination at all. Happiness yes. is in the here and now. If you put happiness as a future event, and I have met quite a lot of people, and one of the people that I spent a bit of time with last year was saying, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that, and da da da. And when I, when, once I've done um, this, I'm going to do three years of this, and then I'm going to be able to become a barrister and I'm going to do this and this and this. And I said, Why? Mm. Why do you want to burn all this time in? Well, because that's what I need to do, to, to, and, and then I'll be really happy. I said, really? I still have bad news for you. If that's the path you're going to go on to be happy, you're going to burn 10 years of your life striving for this in pain, uh, pushing harder than you think. 10 years out of your life's going to be gone, and you're going to be in exactly the same mental state as you're in now. They, they were not very happy with uh, my, my thoughts. They're very, very mm -hmm. unimpressed. Mm -hmm. and, I, and the reason this is, though, is happiness is only available to you now. Mm. Be happy now. Be, and also enjoy the... Like if you, and it's good to have goals, and it's good to have ambitions, but if you're not happy now and you're not enjoying the process right in this moment and then the next moment and then the next moment, if you're not seeking happiness in the individual micro moments, then it's like a compounding effect. You compound effect to the end result where it is fucking amazing. But if you're sitting here bitching and moaning and... and, and begrudgingly taking the next step because you think somehow that that's going to be better over there, yeah. you're going to fall short this, constantly. This is the problem that society in the world has actually taught us, and I know we're going down a wormhole, we but wormhole. society has taught us that the next moment is going to be better than this one. Mm. Fucking useless, it's not. If you can't appreciate this moment completely, some of our situations and moments just aren't great, but that doesn't mean that you should think the next moment is going to be better than the last. You need to be able to make the most and be at peace in every moment because the very next moment you might have, you might be dead. It's as simple as that. If you're putting off living now for some sort of future event, of course get excited about things that are gonna happen in future and, and have that. Don't live there though because this too shall pass. This moment and the next moment will also pass like that. And if you're putting off living, you're gonna have a life that is very very basic and if you like if it's a monetary like and I've, I've been there myself like if you think money is going to make you happy i remember working in the mines earning 90k a year and having just myself to deal with and my gym addiction and i was still unhappy and i still didn't have money like mm. money will not buy your happiness all it will do is amplify what's in here that's it that's all money will do is amplify what's in here so if you're full of misery and not enoughness and um scarcism or any of that it's going to be it's, amplified it's a very interesting process because i've i've had ridiculous amounts of money in my life at different times and i wasn't any happier mm. i was no happier not even with things going on but i kept striving for more and wanting more and having more and all that wanted me to keep, made me want to keep doing is keep working to try and have more. From my own experience, and anyone else could be having a completely different experience, and there's 
some of the best moments in my life. I was absolutely flat broke, and if anyone's watching this that actually knows me, knows how deep and broke I actually was. Mm. So I, I was in, I'm not going to go right into it, but I was broker than most people, broker than anyone I ever know. And I've also been extremely wealthy, but I was actually happy broke. Mm. So it actually doesn't, it's not a financial thing, I don't know how we got down this tangent, <laughs> but it's a very interesting point to know that when you slow, when you calm your mind, you're going to be able to come into that presence, you're going to be able to see things clearer, you're going to be able to, to step away from the noise and get better answers. You're going to be able to feel it more and know where you're going a whole lot clearer. Then also, when you do go for advice, you're going to be able to decipher that advice a whole lot better. You're going to be able to say, is that a projection of something that you would do? Is that something your wife's telling you? Is that how you would feel about my life? Or do you genuinely have my best interest at heart? Mm, definitely. And then I would also ask you to take a catalogue of the times that you have asked other people for advice or you have done whatever process and you had that gut feeling of like, oh, I shouldn't do this. But you went and did it anyway and it failed or it bit you in the bum. One thing I have challenged myself upon over the last two years is to take note of those. Mm -hmm. Now, you're probably going to spend a good couple of years taking note and continuously going against your gut instinct. But it's tuning in. Intuition. Is... Intuition is, is massive and it's something that is actually beaten out of us by society. You are, it is ripped away from you a million times a day to have your own intuition. Sell this, buy this, have this, you need that, you want that, you do want this, yes you do, here's a shiny freaking picture and a gorgeous little model that's gonna tell you that you need it. But your intuition is being smothered and also chemically pushed away from you, disconnected from you. So do the right thing. Look after your body, do the fitness, do the food, do the good water, do the breath, and do the things that bring you back into a clean vessel and body. And look, we all do our things on our weekends and whatever that might be, you do you. But spend more of a conscious effort doing the best you can to support you and your biology and your mind. And then understand that your intuition actually is tapped into you. And just just do think, more yeah. work, do more work towards actually tapping into your intuition. I think a good note to take on that of doing more work and doing more of those things. Have a look at your life and have a look at how many hours you actually have in the day. How much of that is detrimental to your health? Mm. The reason, when you start looking at that, most people are sleeping very average, even though we need, do need more sleep. You get up probably the wrong time for your biology. Mm. You eat some crappy breakfast half the time. Then you spend some time driving driving in some shitty traffic in stress in whatever it happens to be and you get to a job that you probably don't like and when you're there you're probably sitting down for a large chunk of the day now around we, people that you probably don't actually appreciate or understand or connect with so we've got to this point and and wherever you are midday in this point we haven't even gone through the whole part of the day first of all you've already spent a massive amount of time sitting now sitting is putting your hips in, in flexion not an extension, you're tightening your hips, energy stored in your hips. You've spent this time in negative emotions, bad energies, not enjoying your day. How many people actually wake up for the day and go, geez, I'm excited to be alive? Not very many of us. Mm. Not very many of us. My point with all of this is, if you want to make a change in your life, start having a look at the ratio of how many good things you're doing for your life as a comparison to the bad things. Mm. So have a look at what's detrimental to your health. And then have a look at how much you can increase it because we can all increase it. Every single one of us. I don't care how good your life is. We can all increase what's, what's positive for our life. And this is, I, I say this a bit with yoga. I have a, a lot of people who may say to me, oh, what's it going to take for my body to get into this position? Or how long is it going to be able to take for me to do that? And I ask them the question, what do you do for work? Oh, I have an office job. Okay, that's great. So what, six hours a day sitting down? Yep. I said, well, you'll probably never get there. Oh, what do you mean? If you're sitting down for six hours a day and you're doing an hour, one hour's yoga twice a week, the ratio ain't real good. The ratio is not real good. Yes, at least you're doing something. But if you're doing that large proportion of your day, doesn't matter whether it's physically, whether it's mentally. If you're in a mental state that's manic for a large chunk of your day, start evening out that ratio. Start trying to do a little bit more. Again, five minutes a day, three deep breaths is a perfect place to start to try mm. and manage anything you're doing. 
but that's a good reminder to you that the majority of us spend this time in stress and in unhappiness and dis-ease mm. and then wonder why we're damn well sick. Mm. We're yeah. all living, people are living in fear. They're having all of these things going on that is just completely unhealthy for your life and body. And then wonder why you need to go to all these people to get advice and then wonder why it's all still confused. Well-rounded there. I was about to do that too. Yeah, so basically it's really about taking check. How are you spending your days, your weeks, your months, your moments, your mind and your heart? And how much are you actually balancing it out so you are in flow, you are wholesome and you are honouring to your body so that your mind actually and your heart and your soul have a chance to actually connect and give you your internal guidance so you're not asking for so much advice. I think it's perfect. Yeah. Done. All right, you amazing people. Love you guys. So cool. A few checked in. We will see you on the flip side. And I believe that will be tomorrow night. Yeah. Good day. The next day after today. Yep. We love you guys. <laughs> uh, I hope that jogged a few things for you. I hope that brought up some thoughts. I know there was heaps of interaction tonight. We love you guys. Um, can I pause and stay still to close this for Tom? Like, oh. <laughs> No, because he grabs it. We've got a friend anyway. that loves seeing where the stills are for these Facebook lives. So I'm so. just going to like. <laughs> Love you guys. <laughs>